Hello, my name is Ian McChesney. I am one of the co-authors in the paper The Effect of Crowding on the reading of program code for programmers with dyslexia. And this is an eye tracking study that I conducted along with my colleague, Dr. Raymond Bond, in the School of Computing at Ulster University. In recent years, there has been a, an increasing recognition of the importance of diversity in the workplace. And neurodiversity is one aspect of this. Um, we are particularly interested in the condition of dyslexia and how programmers who have dyslexia um, might be disadvantaged um, in how they read and understand and construct code. Now we have done some uh, earlier work in this regard and our position at the moment is that um, dyslexia is not a detrimental condition in relation to program reading and comprehension. One question which did emerge from our, our previous studies, however, was surrounding crowding. That is visual distractors around an identifier or a line of code. And it affects all programmers, but we were wondering, or we were, it was suggested by the data that crowding might disproportionately affect programmers with dyslexia, and hence our research question. To study this, we recruited uh, participants and uh, presented to them three small Java programs doing some simple arithmetic and data manipulation um, in either a crowded or a spaced configuration. And these various sessions then um, were undertaken by 30 uh, participants. We had 14 in the dyslexia group, 16 in the control group, um, arranged as shown. As I've mentioned, this was a, an eye tracking study um, and we used a Toby X3 device. And each session with a participant lasted approximately 20 minutes. That includes the setup time um, and going through the various programs. Each uh, program, as we say, had a crowded and a spaced version. Um, spacing was primarily through vertical spacing or vertical white space. And rather than go for extremes of the two configurations, um, we tried to have realistic um, arrangements of both. The data set arising from the study is um, available uh, on Figshare. Um, and the full reference is in the paper, and as well as describing or including the protocols for the study, the full data from each participant session is there, plus selected videos, heat maps, um, definition of the AOIs, and so on. We have a range of hypotheses which we investigated. Um, and very briefly, in terms of comprehension time and performance, we did not identify any significant interaction effect between program type, crowded or spaced, and participant type um, with or without dyslexia. There were some eye gaze metrics that we used to, to probe um, sort of visual effort. So on visit count, for example, for um, an AOI, an area of interest, there was no significant interaction effect that we identified over full exposure. When we did limit our uh, metrics to what we have called the search phases, the first 5, 10 or 15 seconds, some, in this case lines of code, did show some different behaviour. Similarly, with visit duration, um, there were certain areas of the programme that showed some differences or significant differences, um, but relatively limited. We were also interested in recognition time and time to first fixation showed some differences, albeit 
only in program two and for first visit duration there was no significant interaction effect just to briefly illustrate some of the, the the graphs in the paper so if there's really no difference we would expect to see um, results as shown for a given line of code the um, programmers with dyslexia had some difference between spaced and crowded version uh, similarly the control group um, in this case very little difference but the difference in differences was very similar so we were looking for these sorts of patterns where there was a significant difference in the differences across the types overall we have concluded or find that the interaction effects were really quite sparse and conflicting overall suggesting that crowding does not lead to detrimental performance in visual access to or recognition of program features um, for the dyslexia group as well as our hypotheses we did probe some other metrics and tentatively uh, these might be suggesting or raising the question do the edges of the code space especially in a crowded program draw the dyslexia gaze in some way so in answering our question uh, we believe that there is no disproportionate deficiency for the programmer with dyslexia but there are we think lots of further um, areas that we can explore for further study Thank you. Hi, let's start with some question. Audience is very active today. So one from Eliane, how does dyslexia specifically relate to vertical spacing so um, versus horizontal spacing or other format choices? Yeah, so thank you for the question. In this study, we did limit our, our the, the differences to, to vertical spacing. Um, Readers with dyslexia do have an optimal landing position on words. And that is primarily on the sideways reading. But this is when looking at natural text. And of course, because in reading a program, the gaze is not as linear as when reading natural text, then we're going to see some differences also in the differences in the vertical gaze. Um, but yes, it's a valid point. We did focus on differences in vertical spacing, also because that's the primary difference one would find in real world programs when you compare different layouts um, of program. OK. Yeah. Thank you. So let's move to the second question from Karen. Did you control for other neuro mm. neurodiversity aspects? Um, for example, I would expect that someone with ADHD would have a particular issue with this, especially due to comorbidity rates with dyslexia. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, thank you again. Really good question. Um, no, we did not. <laughs> um, one of the challenges in this work is that once you begin to focus on these aspects of neurodiversity, your sample size becomes very small. So even within the condition of dyslexia, there are many different facets to that condition and many different types. And we didn't even control for those. We did ask the participants, and it is in the data set, how they self-rated their dyslexia as mild, moderate, or severe. Uh, but yes, other aspects of neurodiversity would enrich this, but that's a really big challenge. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks, Jan. So we have another question, but we have us uh, only uh, okay. 20, 20 seconds. So I would thank uh, to you for uh, for uh, for this question answer session. You will you can continue to answer the question on uh, on the chat or sure. move to the discussion room. But really interesting work. And yeah, that's it. Let's yep. move to the final uh, presentation. And thanks again, Jan. Thank you. Thank you.